So more to come on that later, but uh, what's going on with the R Finder? Well, uh, you know, we've had a lot of exciting stuff. Joe and, and, and the boys have been uh, making some some pretty great strides. We just uh, released. Uh, do you have the update with TGIF yet? I think, I, you know, I got to notice that it said that if I wanted to do the beta, then I could choose to do the beta, which TGIF was supported on. But um, What version do you have on your gray bar at the top? Let, let's see. I'll tell you right now. Um. One dot no, that's not one dot two. Yeah, you should dev up, one dot two. You should be up to one four. So like, okay. I'll, I'll help you get that updated. But okay. the one four actually has on the uh, on the um, uh, um, and, and you can switch back and forth between the, what we call the stable and the and and the experimental version. But you can flip to the experimental okay. version and get the TGIF. And you just okay. literally have to put in your TGIF uh, uh, hotspot password and <clears throat> take a connection. Oh, there it goes. Okay, update now to RF1 underscore 1 1.4. Yep, that's it. So. Okay, all right. Okay. Let's update now. Yep. Downloading the update. Uh, you yeah, that's the other thing. Okay. Is like all the updates happen inside the app now. So even like, you know, if there's a ROM yeah. update, it'll let us know, you know, you know, stuff like that, so. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've noticed that because I, you know, I don't, I don't boot this thing and use it every day, but I, I generally will take it on road trips. And when I took it to Colorado, um, two or three weeks ago, uh, I went up there with Giga, Giga Parts for an Overland show. Oh, how was it? It was fun. It was fun. So, um, I look forward to, there's another one in, uh, there's another one in Virginia in October next month that I was going to try to go to, but I, I, I am not going to be able to make it. Well, I had a question come in when, uh, and you, you already answered it, but not on stream. So Forgotten Cameras, now this is a guy, Forgotten Cameras is his name, and he's talking about old versions of Android. So I find that ironic, but you know, I, I laugh at stuff like that. <laughs> My biggest question about the security of the older Android versions on the B1 Plus, very interested in getting one, but that's holding me back. So well, it shouldn't hold you back, honestly. Uh, you know, we do um, a few times a year, we do security patch updates. Um, and, and we have users that are still on Android 6 um, on, on the original M1s and the K1s. They work mm -hmm. perfectly. In fact, I was in Germany and I met one user that had a um, that had an original H1. Really? He had an original H1, and that mm -hmm. was six and a half years ago, roughly. Yeah. Um, so uh, was just about a little over six. Um, uh, that unit's on five one one, and he was using it daily, and it was still working perfectly. You know, it's a radio. Mm hmm. Well, it's a lot more than a radio, like what like what I tell people. So, but yeah, yeah, good. Okay. My mom says I finally did something right, guys. So, <laughs> no, 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 so just remember, it's mom approved. So that's right. That's right. That's right. It's mom approved. Mom approved. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> that's funny. Yep. So we have some B one classics. They're only available at the rfinder.net website. Not okay. Um, you know, so uh, uh, if you guys want to save a little bit of money, they're um, under a thousand, but we are well under a thousand. So uh, mm. you can grab uh, classic B ones, which work perfectly. You have a classic B one in your hand. Yeah, yeah. This is this is a classic. In fact, this is one of the first ones. This is the one that Nick had. Oh, really? And, uh, yeah. Oh, that was one of the prototypes. Uh, yeah. I mean, the hardware is all the same, I think. But yeah, it had the 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 uh, the original prototype uh, dual band app on it. So. Yep. Or dual band ROM or whatever it was on it. Yep. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that was actually the module that the RF module that I, that I uh, designed. So uh, mm. it still runs great. I mean, every time I boot it up, it comes right up. It does all the updates. I like taking, I, I like traveling with it because, you know, you could just find repeaters with it easily. Yeah. You so, never have to program it. It just works. Right. You know, yeah. and you can't find a DMR repeater. You just hit the DMR override, the DMR right button, and mm -hmm. you're instantly mm -hmm. on, uh, you know, on on Brandmeister or TGIF Net without uh, mm -hmm. modifying a code plug to do it or anything. It just works. So. Yeah. What's new from the B1 to the B1 Plus? Uh, uh, the... USB charging. Right. Uh, it's Android nine instead of eight, mm -hmm. and. Uh, 
It's got a um, 2.3 gigahertz processor instead of two, but you really don't feel the difference. It's not okay. okay. Like you don't actually like actual end user performance. It doesn't really make a difference. Yeah. So, but yeah, this... those are the only differences. Uh, but we, like I said, we do have B1 Classics in stock, ready to go um, from our finder.net without, um, without mm -hmm. any delay. And they work fantastic. Mm -hmm. I have Can... actually here, we have for special order also, this one mm -hmm. is a 14. Oh, that's the one that works with, uh, what's it, COM 14 or whatever? Yeah, with FirstNet, it's got LTE, first. Yeah, yeah, it's got LTE band fourteen on it. So, um, um, so and thirteen, by the way, for those that like have been asking for band thirteen on Verizon and stuff. So, okay, it's got um, you know uh, band fourteen, and that's really the only difference. So yeah. let me uh, get Terry's question real quick. Can this replace my cell and and add radio? I've not looked at the R Finder very much. So I'll tell you this: I carried the H. I carried the M1. I don't remember if I carried the H1 or not. I had an H1, but I carried the M1 for a year and a half, and I got the K1 and and tested it and got rid of it. I didn't like the small form factor. That was just my personal preference. It wasn't my favorite either. But yeah, liked it. but I I carried the M1 for a year and a half um, as my only cell phone, and and it worked it worked great. So um, the the great thing about the B1 is it's just it's just more it's dual band. The M1 the original M1 was mono band. So this one's dual band. It's um, uh, got a lot more features in it. And Bob, I'm going to ask you later. I don't want to get into this at the moment, but about your uh, APRS progress, about getting actual APRS built into it. Well, we have um, APRS now um, through the R. Like we have something like APRS in in the R Finder system. Yeah, uh, like, yeah. You yeah. can see where everybody else is that you know that have opted in to sharing their positioning. Mm -hmm. But you can also turn on a switch that says, you know what, post me onto uh, onto APRS also. So it does a pass through without actually um, uh, taking up time on the on the trans, you know, the trans. But it does it does that over the internet, right? It right. doesn't it doesn't yeah. actual tr actually transmit an RF signal. That is on correct. One... Now okay. Okay. we are working on um, the ability, and we think we're pretty close. Um, we're in, in in test development, test development, test development mode, on um, on feeding audio from Android into um, the RF module and receiving audio from the RF module into Android. And we have a device um, with uh, uh, the guy that wrote APRS Droid. Um, okay. So he he's got he's got a device. He's just waiting for us to finish the API. Um, that same a API is going to enable some other things like slow scan television, stuff like that, obviously. Um, and we're also working on um, uh, uh, something with heavens above to uh, to be able to track satellite, right. this thing, change frequency, blah, blah, blah. And, and uh, yeah. hopefully, if I can get this thing working, then we'll uh, move on to the uh, portable as L rotator that operates off of Bluetooth. So it'll actually like swing an arrow antenna for you automatically as you're- uh... I'm looking forward to trying that. Yep, me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, John John from Yezy wants to know, have the issues with AT&T not allowing it on their system been updated? I know that was a thing back way back when, but I think that's long past yeah, being- That's long result. been straightened out. Um, the yeah. truth is um, uh, they, are trying to strong arm people into you know into leasing devices from them yeah so uh they basically said you know anything that is not on our approved list and 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 there's this there's, there's an extortion fee from us to, to be able to get the on their official approved list yeah We're in the middle of doing it and then they pulled the rug out from uh bring your own device byod Mm -hmm. And we were just about to send them a check and they were like, no more B BYOD. I was like, well, um, why are we uh, paying money with you guys to get on your approved list if you're not going to allow it anymore? Mm -hmm. So we took another approach. Um, we told people um, to call AT&T and tell them that if you do not enable this device, you're going to lose me as a customer right now. I'll just go over to T-Mobile and it'll just work without any question. Mm -hmm. And basically, somehow, 
I don't know <laughs> how it happened. But all of a sudden, people are uh, having no. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, it worked. <laughs> all we have to do is call up uh, second level support and tell them to override it, and make it take a Galaxy S8, and mm -hmm. magically it works. Yeah. So firearm in fi firearm. Uh, that's a cool name. F Y R E arm. Firearm N zero W H A says I got an ATM T AT and T SIM put in at the store. They had to override it, and it showed as not a compatible, but it worked fine when they did the override. So, That's correct. There you go. So, so another happy yep, customer. There you go. And, yeah, unfortunately, they're causing the problem, not us. They'll tell yeah. you the three G device, and they're lying, and they know better because uh, we actually upgraded, up, updated all the data, the the GSM um, uh, database, uh, worldwide yeah. database, to show these IMEIs as uh, as four G, and showing actually what actual bands that they uh, operate on and yeah they like to pretend i don't know i like pretending occasionally it's fun like <laughs> i don't know yeah <laughs> i don't know uh, when will it support bluetooth on the radio side that's a good question that i'd like to know myself well the truth is we <laughs> we had a an external device that was um uh, ready to go and unfortunately, something happened with that uh, with that manufacturer. They kind of like fell off the planet. So um, we're looking at another one. It's going to connect to the um, uh, to the Pogo port on the right side. This guy. Um, yep. and, and then you'll have a, a Bluetooth mm -hmm. device that'll go through that. We've attempted to, mm -hmm. um, uh, and it was in the design spec to allow Bluetooth directly from Android, but. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, in uh, you know, after you go through all hardware development and start developing the software, then you find out things. So we ended up with like a mm -hmm. three to four second uh, latency. Oh wow! It was just That's not, terrible. Yeah, you know, it was one second maybe, but it's three to four seconds. It's just not even like usable. So, um, so we could use the internal um, Bluetooth to get to the radio, but um, mm -hmm. we uh, we're working on a side side attached device to uh, provide bluetooth so and i had one i had it working and then it's like uh where are you guys we're ready to order and like oh sheesh yep goodness uh john wants to know if it works with verizon it works with everything honestly with everything. inside was... of the usa and outside of the us it has dual yeah. sim slots so. yep in fact you take a verizon you have to use a working sim from verizon from another device so you take your working sim and stick it in here go to verizon get another sim for your device go home and swap them and you're mm -hmm. back to where you were and with a new device and I've, you know in foreign countries you know you've I've tested this all over. i tested it in the conga i've tested it in israel i've tested it in all over europe i was just in germany i grabbed the sim and slammed it in one in two of them actually and they just turned on and started working instantly I'm down here in uh, Mexico. I use a tel cell sim. This is a dual sim unit. So I've got a tel mm -hmm. sim and a uh, uh, and a uh, and a uh, uh, AT and T first net sim, and you know I can swap back and forth, and they work just fine. So mm. <clears throat> it's great. Good, 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 good. Yeah, Mike, I agree. Three to four seconds is nasty. It's unusual. <laughs> Um, yeah, the, uh, the Bluetooth one that we're looking at is uh, quasi instantaneous. So uh, mm. we should have, we should have that going pretty soon. Mm. In fact, we've had users create create them. Same kind of solution. They like taken mm. a headset and created a uh, you know a wired in a Bluetooth module for like motorcycles and stuff. And, and... Oh, that's kind of cool. Yep. Okay. Okay. Good. So. Yes, Salty Ham, you do need one. Get a hold of me right after. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Uh, HL is asking about transcoding. So I know that you were talking about that at one point, but you know what? A lot of companies have tried that, and nobody's made it successful except for really, I guess. You know, honestly, um, what's better is an end node. For instance, mm -hmm. if you wanted to use DSTAR, you would stick DroidStar on it. You can go straight to the DSTAR network over IP. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, not over RF, obviously, over IP. Um, uh, but we are working on something very interesting. The thing I mentioned earlier about um, uh, routing audio to and from the um, RF exciter um, and the and the receiver into and out of Android. 
Um, we're working on uh, something with M17. Uh, so we believe Good. if we can get this working properly, that uh, M7, we will have the first production M17 device. Uh, literally, you'll literally like load the software and you'll be ready to rock and roll. So, Will um, it connect over IP? Connect us? Uh, first, we're doing the IP and then we're doing over RF. Okay, so you'll be able to use like, uh, okay. Well, but so, right now, I mean, understand that there really is no true RF solution. There's no like, there's no correct way of getting, a, you know, a repeater an M17 right. up and running, you know, so it's all theoretical and in the right. lab, you know, um, in, in Poland, I guess they have it running right now and in, in the lab in Poland. They have some way to hack a TYT MD380. And it's quite the hack because I saw it. At, they had it at uh, at Orlando last February. Oh, it's so quite a hack, believe me. Yeah, well, but we support uh, the M17 guys, and and we're hoping that, like I said, we are truly hoping that we will have the first production M17 device, and then when the repeaters are rock, you know, you'll be able to go point to point between devices. But sure, they have, uh, and we'll be able to go over IP. So you know, as an end node, like we do right now with um, you know, with DMR over IP. So no. We think we're going to be the first ones to, to, you know, to market with that. Those guys will be at uh, Tapper this be, weekend. By the so way, that'll be on them. the current B1. So if you have a B1 Classic or a B1 Plus or a B14 mm -hmm. Plus or one of the uh, tablets, you know, the P7, P10s, those will all be able to do this. So mm -hmm. for sure. Yep. Cool, man. Well, why don't you why don't you do the screen share thing and show us what uh, what the uh, DMR over IP to TGIF looks like. All right, so um, if you take a look at um, uh, uh, DMR options, DMR ROIP options, um, we we now have two different locations for um, uh, for the hotspot uh, passwords. We have the ability to um, uh, put in the hotspot passwords for both. Uh, Grandmeister and uh, and TGIF and I have to stop looking at YouTube because I'm like losing my mind. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then uh, you can put in what's known as what we call multi RX, which is kind of like our answer to to promiscuous mode on 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 radio over IP, because obviously we're not listening to a single frequency and trying to say, well, what's all our traffic on this particular frequency. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, so you can put in a set of talk groups that you listen to when you flip it into the promiscuous mode, um, known as multi RX on the, uh, on the, um, uh, on the, uh, uh, radio side and that's it. And then you choose your server. Um, and then, uh, that's it. I put that in, I put in my, I, I don't. TGIF is that the same password and everything? Do they have unique passwords the way that Brand Brandmeister used to be just P A S S W zero R D, and then they made you start choosing unique passwords a while back? So no, they this, they um they they uh they they assign you a password. They assign you a password. Okay. Uh, Robert's in the chat. Robert, hit me up. I have no freaking clue what my TGIF password is. <laughs> so well, just go on the TGIF network and log in and click on. Um, you know, click on your call sign and then uh, self care, and then go into the shield icon, and it'll show it to you. Okay, so it's very very easy. That. And then okay. to switch over to DMR over IP, you literally touch the DMR over IP button, mm -hmm. pops up um, uh, uh, a uh, disclaimer, and then you can choose whether you're connecting to Brandmeister or TGIF. You click the TGIF. Oh. And if everything works right, then it says net roam on the screen, which is what it says right now. So we're actually connected right now on um, TGIF. Do you have a talk group on TGIF that we like, but that's pretty busy? You know, the one, the only one that I have ever used or, or quite frankly care about is 31665. That's the main, that's the main talk group, or at least it used to be. So um, that's the one. Over to 31665. Thir yeah, 31665. And if there's any traffic, we'll see it. Um, although, uh, um, I don't know if you can see my signal bars from where I am right now. It's, it's pretty crappy right now. So yeah, I see that. Yeah, I do. I also noticed that the that the uh, there's somebody talking. Yeah, um, uh, that, oh, that was, was you. That was you. Yeah, okay. Transmitted. So, <laughs> all right, Izzo. 
I got to put that up there. Um, so the thing that's unique about DMR over IP is I noticed that the blue, uh, and this has been true since day one, the uh, the power button at the bottom right of the screen is um, blue instead of red. When it's red, it's on RF, so you can key up a local repeater, hotspot, whatever. When that it's blue, correct. when it's blue, it's on DMR over IP. So, oh, you 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 made it mad. I made it mad. No, made it mad. <laughs> really, <laughs> yeah. It usually handles it pretty well, but we're still connected. I just changed the. Okay. Okay. So. Yeah, I noticed mine will say that sometimes it says the app stops, but by the time I click close, it's already relaunched the app by itself. Mm -hmm. So, but again, I'm using a beta version. I'm not using the production version when I see that. So, yeah. just uh, just a heads up on that. So, well, I'm on the dev version myself right now. So, yeah, yeah, I, I, I figured you were. So, anyway, it's literally a yeah. one button click to switch between DMR over IP and um, uh, and and RF. It's literally a a oh, one button, you know, one button to click to switch between IP and RF. So if you lose your repeater, it's immediately, you know, switch over to IP and, you know, it's pretty Gotcha. Straight. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, Robert's saying TJIF password is only for secure talk groups and 31665 is a secure talk group. So, um, so yeah, so, uh, somebody else mentioned uh, talk group. 1033 on TGIF. I've not used that one myself, but um, Centaria B1 now. That's what I should use for my password. <laughs> no, not not quite. Not quite. Cent oh, <laughs> very Terry nice. wants a B1. Yeah, sure, Terry. Yeah. Terry, just uh, hit me up later, and we'll get one out to you today. Radio experimentation at its at its finest. That's right. Yeah. Remember, guys. You're not ham radio operators. You are radio experimenters. Okay, so don't stop mm. experimenting. Have fun right. learning every Correct. day. There's always something cool to learn. First of all, when you get one, every person is on the design team. So if you come up with a great idea that uh, we think we can make happen, some of our greatest ideas have come from you know from our end users. Uh, certainly, a lot of our work, you know, like workflow stuff, have come from end users. Some, many have come from me, obviously in my travel mm -hmm. around the world and seeing how people use radio and DMR in general and stuff like that. So, but you know, your uh, purchase today helps support our development for tomorrow. So it's, uh, um, you know, you're really jumping on board and being part of a great revolution in radio. It's, uh, it, it's a lot of fun. I mean, anybody that owns one will tell you how much fun they are to use. I agree with that. It is a lot of fun to use. Yep. Yep. Cool. And, and it just works anywhere on earth. You know, it doesn't matter where I am. If I land in Tel Aviv, it'll work. If I land in Dallas, it'll work. If I land in, you know, I took the ferry over to, to Cancun uh, to Playa del Carmen and they got machines over there. I was opening them up as I was driving to Cancun. Hmm. So, you know, it just, um, it just works. Works in coastal China, Hong Kong, Shenzhen, 